Hello there and welcome back to my channel. I have a super exciting video, a highly requested one today. I am going to be showing you how I organize my classroom library. Instead of just showing you the finished product, I'm going to take you step by step how I take a big pile of books and get it organized into my classroom library. In one of my last vlogs, I showed you all a sneak peek at my updated library labels. I first created these about five years ago and they were well overdue for an overhaul. But today I'm gonna really take you step-by-step step through the process. First, I did wanna show you just a brief overview of how this system actually works, especially if you did not see that prior video. First of all, I do store my library books in bins. Now, I have a couple of different reasons for this. First of all, my library shelves are very deep and if I stored my books spine out I would be missing like half of the shelf <laughs> so using these nice long bins allows me to use a lot more of the space on the shelf plus I have just found with a lot of my reluctant readers you know those kids that don't want to pick up a book it really helps for them to be able to see the cover of the book instead of just the spine sometimes the artwork on the cover will help get their attention and make them want to pick up a book now I do my system based on these symbols. So you will notice the actual bin has a symbol. This one, for example, is a star. And then every book that's in that bin has the exact same symbol on it. This makes it super easy for my students to maintain my classroom library and keep it organized because they know that the symbol on the book has to match the symbol on the bin. And it's just a system that I've used for years that has never been disappointing. Now, I do have these library bin labels in my TPT store. They will be linked for you in the description box. They are editable and that was the biggest change that I made. I've included over 500 symbols or the little icon pictures for you to choose from. And and then you are able to fully customize the label, which I will show you in this video. All right, let's jump into it. The very first step is to categorize your books. Now, I personally get almost all of my books from Goodwill just because there is a Goodwill right by my school, right by my gym. There's another one by my house and it's super convenient and the books are really cheap. I can get them typically for 50 cents, but sometimes they do sales and I can get them as cheap as 25 cents per book. And I'm talking like hardcover children's books. I tend to go at least once a month, sometimes twice a month, and I just buy any books that I see that I know I wanna add to my library and I typically store them at home and then once a year I will go through and label them all and then add them into my classroom library. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you all of the books that I have been collecting that I need to label. All right, so as you can see, I have a ton of books. I do wanna clarify though, in my library, I store my picture books separate from my chapter books. Now the process for actually organizing them is the exact same. I will show you the bins that I use for my picture books later on later on in the video. But for the sake of just demonstrating step-by-step step what I do, I'm going to be using the chapter books and Luna is now playing with one of the bags that I had these in, so hold on. Now when it comes to creating categories for my library, I don't stick to any one system just because I haven't found one system that I really like. So when I create my categories, sometimes my category will be by the author. Sometimes it's by the series. Sometimes it's by the genre. It really just depends on the books that I have. And I think it's important to keep in mind that everyone's classroom library is going to be different. We all have different books that we've collected over the years. So your categories are going to probably look very different than mine. <laughs> so what I really like about my system is it allows you to personalize your categories based on the books that you have. So you will see in the examples that I already showed you, this one is a category of Beverly Cleary books. Now, most of these are the Ramona and Beezus books, but I knew in my library, I have a lot of other Beverly Cleary books that are not the Ramona and Beezus series. So by categorizing it under the author, I can put not only the Ramona and Beezus books, but also any other Beverly Cleary books that I have. Then my other, example bin, these are 39 Clues books. So the 39 Clues is a book series and actually every book has a different author. So instead of doing it by author, I'm doing it by the series and that's just what works for me. So 
I now have this huge pile of books. I'm literally just going to start digging through them and trying to kind of find categories that make sense based on the books that I have. Okay, so already I'm looking and I know that I have a lot of Captain Underpants books. And I typically pick these up anytime I find them at Goodwill because they tend to fall apart very easily because they have those things where the kids have to like flip the pages back and forth and they're pretty cheap. So I pick these up a lot, but instead of making just a Captain Underpants category, I see that I have this book. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. The Adventures of Ook and Gluck, Kung Fu Cavemen from the Future. <laughs> so it's technically not Captain Underpants, but it is Dave Pilkey. At least I think, I mean, it says the creators, hold on. It's not Dave Pilkey. Well, no, it's other people, but it is a graphic novel. So I could create a category of graphic novels and put this in there. I don't know. So I'm gonna put this one to the side. <laughs> but I will create a Dave Pilkey category. There goes my son. So the lighting completely changed, so I had to move my camera, but <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a Dave Pilkey category. And then this one, I'm gonna just put to the side. I could put this with graphic novels or I might just add it in with Dave Pilkey anyway. So I'm just gonna create a separate category for that right now. Also looking through, I have a lot of Minecraft books. So I have this one. This one, oh, here's another one of that same book. So I'm gonna put that with the other one. So I have a lot of Minecraft. Here's another one. And I know I had some over here. Yep, here's another one. So obviously I have quite a few Minecraft books. So I'm gonna create a Minecraft category. Now I notice, mm, let's see, is this? Okay, Dork Diaries might be its own category. I don't know if I have enough of those. However, here's another dork diary, so I can put that there. Oh, I have a lot of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I know that. So here are all Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Um, yeah, so I have several Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. So I'm gonna create that as a category. And as you go through, keep in mind that the number of categories is going to depend on the amount of space that you have. So I would recommend first kind of analyzing how many bookshelves do you have? How many bins could you fit on each shelf? And figuring out how many categories you're going to create because you may need to consolidate categories in order to make it all fit. But I do wanna show you for any books that might not fit in a category, for example, I have Frindle. I don't really have a lot of Andrew Clements. Is that how you pronounce last name? I don't have a lot of his books and it just is this one copy. So I could either create just a chapter book section and put this in there, or I could do it by genre. So I could have fiction books, nonfiction books, historical fiction, whatever. It's just gonna depend on the books that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and create just a general like chapter book section, and then I can divide it up based on what I have. So I'm also going to add Bud Not Buddy to that section. I have Watson's Go to Birmingham. And even though these are the same author, I don't think I have enough books by this author to create its own category. So I'm gonna add this into chapter books. Now I do have a lot of Harry Potter books. <laughs> and personally, I like to have a big range in terms of level by my books. I do not sort them by level. I do not organize them by level. And I don't even like label them with the level. I just personally don't think that's how kids should be picking their books but <laughs> I do have a wide range in terms of the levels of my books. So I do have Harry Potter books. I could definitely create these into a category because I have a lot of them. Here's one, here's one, here's one. So this would definitely be its own category. Here is a Babysitter's Club book. This can be added into my graphic novel section because I don't think I have enough Babysitter's Club books to have them be their own category, but I could add it into graphic novels. Here's another Babysitter's Club book, so I'll add that to graphic novels. Ooh, okay, so these ones are interesting. So I have Fish in a Tree and The One and Only Ivan. I could, and this is very specific to me, I could actually create a category of books that are read alouds for our fourth grade curriculum. My curriculum is created by my county, but throughout the different quarters of the year, we have different read alouds. We read aloud Fish in a Tree, One and Only Ivan. Actually, we read aloud Bud Not Buddy. 
So I could actually create a category of all of our read aloud books. I do think it's really cool for the kids to be able to go and get their own copy of the book. And sometimes they read ahead, that's fine. <laughs> but sometimes they just go back and reread it afterwards. So I'm gonna actually put these together. I think that might be a good category. I'm also seeing a lot of kind of sports books. So I see Roberto and Me, Kickoff by Tiki and Rondé Barber. Okay, I guess I don't have that many here, but I know in my classroom I have some more sports books. So I might use these to create a category. Here's another 39 Clues book. So that will go in this category. What do I have over here? Lightning Thief. And I have another, here's another Lightning Thief but I don't think they're gonna be their own category, so these might go in with chapter books. Okay, this one, I Am Rosa Parks. I could either create a biography or like autobiography, I could combine the two section, because I also have Meet Martin Luther King Jr., who is Bill Gates, so I definitely have some that could fit into that category. So I'm gonna go ahead and group those together. So hopefully you all get how I'm creating these categories. I'm literally just looking at my books and going, you know what, what can I put together? So I'm going to finish that process and then afterward I will show you all of my categories. So here are my final categories. I have about 20 of them, but in my classroom, I have enough room for 24. Of course, I have some categories in my classroom that I already have bins for that I do not necessarily have any books to add to them, and that's okay. But I am gonna go through and just kind of show you each one of the categories. Obviously, I already showed you Beverly Cleary and 39 Clues. Then I have Harry Potter. These next two are actually both chapter books and I typically have more than one bin in order to store chapter books. Then I have our interactive read aloud books for fourth grade. Then I have Magic Tree House, A to Z Mysteries, Judy Moody and Stink, Dave Pilkey and or Captain Underpants, Minecraft, Dork Diaries, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Graphic Novels, biographies and autobiographies. I think they're probably all biographies. I'm trying to think of any autobiographies I have. I don't know. <laughs> but when I make that label, I can decide Cupcake Diaries, Ivy and Bean, Sports. <laughs> Very uh, clever title there. This one I think I'm doing just like fairies. Let me try to show you. It's probably gonna be shaky on the camera. So I have a couple of these Never Girls and then I also have these Disney fairies. So I think I'm just gonna group those together. And then this one is actually not a category of books I'm gonna keep in my room. So I have a Black Lagoon book and a Juna B. Jones. These are a little bit too low for my library. These are books that I had when I taught second grade, but right now they're just not important categories to keep in my library. All right, so the next step is just to create a list of all of my categories. So I have a notebook and I'm literally just going to write out what all of my categories are because I would rather work from a piece of paper than this huge pile of books. <laughs> So now that I have my categories, the next step is to decide what symbol I want to represent each category. I have my list, so next to each like category title, I'm just going to write what I'm kind of envisioning the symbol being, and then I'll show you how to go about actually finding it. So for Harry Potter, I'm thinking either a lightning bolt or like his glasses. So I'm just gonna write lightning. For chapter books, obviously I'm just going to have a book <laughs> of some kind. Same thing for my IRA books or our interactive read aloud books. That's just gonna be another image of a book. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I'm thinking a stick figure because it's all stick figures. <laughs> so stick figure. Dork Diaries. It would be great if I had a diary image. Minecraft, some kind of like an ax of some kind. <laughs> Captain Underpants, underwear. Judy Moody and Stink. I'm thinking some, it's mostly Judy Moody because I think I have some books that are just Judy Moody. So I'm gonna say an image of a girl. A to Z Mysteries. I actually have an icon that says A to Z. So I'm gonna use that. <laughs> Magic Tree House. Oh my goodness, my hair. I'm gonna do a tree house. Shocker. Graphic novels. I'm kind of thinking like a speech bubble of some kind. Biographies and autobiographies. Maybe just like a, a people icon, like with a person like a silhouette type of thing. Cupcake Diaries, cupcake. 
Ivy and Bean. So they're two friends. So maybe something with friends of some kind. I don't know. Sports. I could basically do any sport thing. I'm just gonna write sport. <laughs> and then fairies, obviously I'm going to use a fairy icon. Okay, so now that I have this, let me show you how to actually go about creating your labels and finding the symbols that you need. All right, so now that I have my list and I know what icons I want, let me show you how to actually find them and create your labels. All right, so I have downloaded my library label pack and I have unzipped the file. You will see there are a lot of different things included. <laughs> I do recommend watching the tutorial video, but I'm also gonna just show you. I'm going to first open up the bin labels guide. And the reason I'm opening this up is because it's gonna show more symbols per page. So it's just easier to go through and find what you need. Cause as I mentioned, there's over 500 of them. <laughs> so first Harry Potter, I had said a lightning bolt or glasses. Now in order to make it easier to find what I need, they are listed alphabetically, but I can also do a search and find. So on a PC, it's gonna be control F on a Mac, it's gonna be command F and it will open up your search and find. So I could type in lightning and click next and look it took me directly to the lightning bolt now it's going to give you a page number that is for the bin label but I'm gonna actually show you all an easier way because when the labels are all on one page let me show you what I'm talking about so I'm gonna open up the bin labels and I'm gonna go ahead and do Google Slides so I'm just going to click here and it's going to prompt me to make a copy. I click make a copy. This is going to save it to my drive so I can always go back and edit it. But you will notice when it pops up, I think there's about 10 labels per page and I might not end up needing all of the labels. <laughs> so for example, let me go back to the organizer. Okay, it said the lightning bolt is page 26. So I'm gonna come down to slide 26. Awesome, so I see the lightning bolt label right here, but I don't need these other labels and I don't wanna print off a whole page just for that one label. So I'm actually gonna show you all a faster way, but first let me go through and find all the other ones that I need. So Harry Potter, lightning bolt, that will work. Chapter books, so I said some kind of a book. Next, there we go. I've included four different books. So for chapter books, I might do book two. So I'm just gonna write book two. And then for the IRA book, I might do book three. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, I had said a stick figure. There we go, stick person, that's how I did it. So if you don't find what you're looking for, try narrowing it down a little bit and hopefully you can uh, find it. So stick person I've got that works, um, a diary. Yep, I've got one of those, um, an ax. Oh, not taxi, hit next. There we go, ax, that'll work. Underwear, yep, that's there. Next I had said a girl for Judy Moody. So I have six different girls. I'm kind of looking, Judy Moody always has that piece of hair that's in her face, so I might do girl four. So then I'm just gonna repeat that process for the rest of them, make sure that there is a label that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the guide and on my Google Slides with the actual bin labels, I'm gonna come all the way down to slide 53. You will notice slide 53, they are all blank, but I'm gonna show you all a game changer. I can actually put all of my labels onto one page. So in order to do that, I'm just going to select the label. I'm going to come to replace image and choose upload from computer. I'm gonna to go to my library labels and there is a folder of bin labels. Once you open that, it has all of the labels already created and they're just alphabetical. So the first one I needed was the lightning bolt. So I'm gonna scroll down to L. Okay, so here is the lightning bolt label. I'm going to click open and it's going to replace that one with the one that I needed. And I'm gonna go in and edit the text. So this one is going to say Harry Potter. Now you can change the font if you want to, but this is just the one that I prefer. Next, we had said chapter books, and I actually need two labels for this, so I'm gonna do it twice. I'm gonna go to upload from computer. I'm gonna come down to where I have the books, and I had said book label two. So I'm gonna open that one, and I'm gonna have this say chapter books, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this label. Come down to books two, okay, open, and chapter books. All right, so I'm just going to repeat this process in order to create the rest of my labels. Okay, so I've finished creating my labels for Ivy and Bean, which they're two friends. I don't have like a friend label, so I ended up using a handshake label, which I feel like 
you know, it's basically the same thing. Now, I do not need these last three labels, so I'm actually going to select the label, and I'm gonna hold down Shift and also select the text box. So I'm gonna do that for each one, and I'm just going to hit backspace in order to delete them. So now, all of my labels fit onto just two pages, which makes it super, super easy. So now the next step is to print the labels. Now for the bin labels, I do like to print them on cardstock instead of regular printer paper. It just makes them a little bit more durable, especially if for some reason I need to replace the bin. I will link the cardstock that I personally use. Now because I'm only doing two, I only need two pieces. So I'm just going to open up my printer and I'm going to take out the regular printer paper and replace it with my cardstock. Next, we need to prepare the labels for the actual books. Now, we're going to use the book label guide, which is different than the bin label guide only because of the page numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the book labels guide. The images are all gonna look exactly the same. The only thing that is changing are the actual page numbers because every book label has its own page. What I'm going to do now, I already have my list of all of the labels and the icons. I'm going to write down what page each of those icons is on so that when I go to print, it's super easy just to type in the pages that I need. All right, so now I'm gonna close out of the guide and I'm going to open up the book labels, which is a PDF. You will notice there are 512 pages, which is why we wrote the page numbers down. So when it comes to printing these, you have two options. Let me grab them. Option number one is to print on circle labels. Now these are one inch size labels. I believe it comes with 63 on a sheet. These are actually the Amazon brand. So I will link the Amazon brand down below, but you could use any brand. Now they will print directly on the labels. However, I'm going to tell you all what I actually do. I print the book labels just on regular paper and here's why. I have used labels in the past on my books and I have found that they do not end up staying on there. Over time they end up peeling off and it's just a pain. Now what I do to overcome that is I would tape them down. But then I realized if I print on paper and just tape the paper down, I don't have to spend money on labels because labels can get very expensive. <laughs> so if I'm going to put tape in order to keep them adhered, anyway, then I might as well just use paper instead of using the labels. So even though yes, you can print them on labels, I'm going to actually show you how to do it just on paper because that's what I do. It saves money, it's cheaper, it's easier, and that's my preference. So I'm going to actually go to file, print within my PDF, and I'm going to select pages, and I'm just going to list all of the page numbers of the labels that I need. So let's see, my first one is 257 comma 36 comma 37 and so on. I'm just going to repeat that for all of the page numbers. Next, let's talk about how to attach the labels to the bin. First of all, I do take the bin labels and I laminate them. This is going to make them more durable. And for some reason, if you have to change bins, you can easily just take the tape off, which I'll get to in a second, and move it to a new bin without damaging the actual label. So once you laminate them and then cut them apart, I use a personal laminator. I laminate first, cut second, and the lamination does not come off. You are going to want to attach it to your bin. Now for the chapter books, I like to use these long rectangular bins. This one is from Michaels. However, I have also gotten bins from Target and from Lakeshore. The ones in my classroom are actually from Lakeshore Learning, but I will link a few different options for you down below. They come in a variety of colors. For the picture books, I like to use this taller bin. You will notice it's a lot higher than the chapter book bin and this is going to help stabilize those picture books so that the bin does not fall over this is actually called a magazine file or a magazine bin i forget which one and it comes from big lots they typically only carry these during back to school time so make sure you are checking and sometimes they are available online so i will try to link them but these come in different colors every year. 
I typically go with a neutral color like black. That way, if I need to replace them, I don't have to worry about the color that I was using being discontinued. When it comes to actually attaching the label to the bin, I just use regular old packaging tape. I also will use transparent tape, like the Scotch transparent tape. However, I do not have access to my classroom and I do not have any of that tape at home. But <laughs> packaging tape works exactly the same way. I essentially just put a piece on either side of the label, attach it to the bin, and then I'm good to go. Now, if for some reason your bin does not maybe have the right texture. I'm thinking back a few years ago, I had bins that were plastic, but it was like a woven basket type texture and the labels would not stick to it. So instead I ended up just hole punching the label at the top and using book rings. They're like those silver rings in order to attach it to the handle part of the bin. So get creative with actually attaching them. But for me, packaging tape works great. Next, let's talk about attaching the book labels. <laughs> so you have a sheet of all these circle labels. One of the first things I do is I will actually either use a paper cutter or a pair of scissors and I will cut it into strips. That is going to make it much easier to hole punch the circles. You do not need to hand cut all of these circles. You would lose your mind. <laughs> Buy yourself a one inch diameter circle punch. You can get them at craft stores like Michael's or you can get them on Amazon and use that to actually punch the labels out. Now I will say I had bought this one on Amazon and it does not work very well. <laughs> one of the sides, it won't punch all the way through. So I do not recommend this one. I think the brand, I don't know, it just says EK on the back, but I did end up ordering myself a Fiskars one, which is like literally on its way to be delivered right now. <laughs> so that's the one you will see me using in this video. But in my classroom, I actually have a Stampin' Up! circle punch that my mom had given me years ago. But go ahead and get yourself a circle punch. You're going to punch these out and then you're going to use packaging tape to tape it in the corner of the book. That packaging tape is going to last four years. I have books that I labeled five years ago and the tape has not started peeling. The label has not come off. It works so much better than using just sticky labels. But I am gonna to recommend to you as you're punching these, instead of only punching out the exact number that you need, go ahead and punch out some extras. I am gonna to talk to you later in this video about why I recommend having extras. So go ahead and do the work now, punch out some extras, put on a Netflix show, watch some YouTube while you do it, okay? I actually enjoy this because it's very mindless and I can be doing other things like watching TV shows or watching a movie, listening to a podcast while I'm doing it. So go Go ahead and treat yourself to your favorite TV show while you are preparing your library. all just a few final tips and ideas of things that you could try out. First of all, you will notice that my labels are all black and white. I keep them very neutral because most book covers and spines have a lot of color in them. And then I also have color in my actual bins. So I don't need my label to also have color. I keep it very plain. But if you would prefer your labels to have color, you can actually just print on colored paper. That way you're not using all of your colored ink because we all know how expensive ink is and you can fully customize the color to be exactly what you want it to be. This is Astro Bright's colored paper, but you can use any colored paper or colored cardstock in order to completely customize the color of the labels. Another idea for you is to actually put the book label on the spine instead of up in the top corner. That is totally personal preference. I do put mine on the top of the book in the corner because my librarian, which is just my student who's responsible for making sure the library stays organized, they will actually go through each bin and literally just like fan through the books and it makes it very easy to check the symbol when they're in the top corner. But if you feel like having it in the corner is somehow impeding on the cover, you could put them on the spine. You could still organize them in bins or you could even organize them just spine out on your library shelves. 
And my final tip goes with those extra book labels. I already mentioned that I recommend punching out extras. That way, as you get new books, it's super easy to add them into your library. A great way to organize them is actually in a bead organizer. Now I don't have one at home, but I will insert a picture of what I'm talking about over here. They basically have these compartments and you can use each compartment for each different category of books that you have. You can put those circle labels in there or the little you know, paper pieces and that way it makes it super easy when you do get a new book, you just take it out, tape it on and you're ready to go. So that is it. That is the step-by-step -step guide on how I organize my classroom library. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. If you are interested in purchasing these labels, it does come with both the bin labels and the book labels. I will have it in the description box for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out with your teacher friends. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I'll catch you in the next one.